Thank you, Darren. You're a powerful force for justice and goodness in the world. It's an honor to be here tonight with you as we gather to celebrate men and women whose courage and dedication to their craft has put them at great personal risk. It is to them that I direct my remarks. All who cherish a free, open, and informed society stand with you. You go to press with stories that could endanger you and your families. Understanding the repercussions might be severe, even a matter of life and death. You are the centuries protecting the values of truth, accountability, and justice. These values are under attack, something we know you confront on a daily basis. In an age of growing author authoritarianism and repression of freedom and democracy, we see the very notion of facts and fairness being called into question. The, that those who cloak themselves in intolerance, nationalism, and corruption would attack the press is to be expected. This has long been the playbook of despots. It is not a coincidence that the founders establish a free press in the very first amendment to our Constitution. They knew tyranny, and they understood that an independent press, which we gather to celebrate tonight, is an essential counterbalance to those who abuse power. We see this counterbalance in action today, both here in the United States and around the world. Through your dedication and courage, malfeasance is being exposed and lies are revealed. In return, you endure attacks on your credibility and your patriotism. Epithets like fake news and enemy of the people are now commonplace. Much of that is in response to your reporting on those with power, political or otherwise. But of course you do much more. You seek out the voices that all too often go unheard, the marginalized, the oppressed, the dispossessed. You provide context to complicated narratives. You inform, enlighten, and even entertain. You allow for shared moments of levity and empathy. You head out into a difficult and complicated world, and you tell us the stories that allow us to learn, to make informed decisions at the ballot box, and keep us smartly engaged in civic life. Growing up in West Milford, New Jersey, almost every family I knew had the local, local paper delivered in the morning, an enterprise fueled by children like myself and my three brothers. That job was more than a way to earn some extra money. We were part of a pattern of American life, a democratic routine in which journalism was an instrument of enlightenment and sometimes even troublemaking, good troublemaking. This belief has only deepened for us at Emerson Collective. Through our work in education, immigration, voting rights, and the environment, we understand how vital journalism is to a just society. There can be no progress without the information to inform it. No sense of shared community or values without the stories that bind us together. At the same time, we're experiencing a fundamental change in the way that people are consuming journalism. Traditional business models have been buffeted by the digital revolution. As a result, scores of local newspapers have closed. Long form and investigative journalism is underfunded, as you all well know. Too much of what takes place in the corridors of power is left uncovered because of a lack of resources. There have been some positive developments, too. There are more diverse voices reporting the news than when I was growing up, and there are exciting new approaches to creative and responsible storytelling. But these fruits of innovation must be allowed to flourish without interference by government or greed. At Emerson Collective, we recognize that we could play a part, and we encourage others to follow. It has become one of the great pleasures of my life to be associated with the brilliant journalists at The Atlantic and the extraordinary teams at ProPublica, the Texas Tribune, the Marshall Project, the American Journalism Project, and many others. Journalism has traditionally been a competitive business. I know there's nothing many of you in this, in this room love more than a good, clean scoop. And a friendly competition drives a lot of great reporting. But here's what the enemies of a free press don't understand. 
While we might work for different news organizations, speak different languages, or live in different countries, to be part of this endeavor is to be part of a community and a cause larger than ourselves. Look around tonight at all of you who have gathered in support of CPJ. This organization says no matter who you are, if you are a reporter and you're in danger, we have your back. You are not alone. You will not be forgotten. We cannot afford to underestimate the ruthlessness and treachery of those who would undermine our free press. But we must not also underestimate our collective strength. Being here tonight and looking out at all of you, I'm filled with confidence not only in the justice of our pursuit, but also in its future. I sense the resolve, the determination. Both of these are hallmarks of great journalism. In a struggle for the soul of this nation, in a battle for justice around the world, I'm honored to be on your side, the sight of all of you who are fighting for truth. Thank you very much.